Before we begin, as usual, I'd like to start with a shout out to a very good channel I've recently found, and it's the Invicta channel. On this channel, they make documentaries, and they, they are beautiful. And these documentaries are historically accurate, very well made, and they talk about Rome, ancient civilizations, it's high quality, good information, definitely Metatron approved. Link in the description below. Check them out. If two civilizations were to clash, one medieval and one classical, namely Roman, who would prevail on the battlefield? Hello and everyone, so welcome back to my channel, this is the Metatron speaking, welcome to the realm of the hypothetical. This is Speculative History. Now, this is a very hot topic, I've been asked loads of times who would win between a medieval uh, army and a Roman legion in an actual battle. Now, before making this video, I had a look at a few forums, for example, I had a look on the internet, had a look at some uh, comment sections to see what the most popular idea was, and I noticed quite a few interesting things. So here is one of the things that I noticed the most, it's what occurs the most. If a Roman legion were to engage in battle with a medieval army, they would. I can already stop you there. This sentence makes no sense. True. The question is outside the boundaries of history, and yet it is defined by it. In other words, in order for our speculation to be sustainable, we need to ground it in precise history. Both when saying Roman time, so classical antiquity and Middle Ages, we need to put a specific time reference, because both of these are enormous periods of time which span for over a millennium each. So from the Roman perspective you will appreciate that the sort of equipment, tactics and general warfare of an early Republican Roman army and that of a late army of the 4th century, for instance, would be so different from each other that generalizing serves no purpose whatsoever. For the Middle Ages, even if we decide not to consider the early Middle Ages as such, so starting to count from 1000 AD to 1500 AD as to simplify a bit the matter at hand, therefore not including the so-called Dark Ages or Late Antiquity for a better term, still the warfare of the Norman army of the Battle of Hastings, 1066, if compared to the armies of the Battle of Bosworth, 1485 would be so different for the armor, weapons, tactics and generally speaking everything that again, medieval army is like saying the umbrella term, car, which can mean this, or this, or this, okay you got the picture, or this. So let's pick a specific time for both. This is, in my opinion, the best way to begin this historical speculation. For the Roman army, I think we can choose a Roman army of the early Principate post marian reforms, as that's the sort of army most people think of when saying Roman legions anyways. So, a Roman legion, imperial, of the first century AD. For the Middle Ages the question is more difficult. The Norman army would be a perfect example of a high medieval army, with specialised mounted forces mostly protected with mail, and of course large shield, which specifically fought opponents using infantry with shields. However, if we further fast forward in time, we could pick a crusader army of the first crusade in 1095. 1099. But what about a late medieval army? Like the two armies of the Battle of Agincourt in 1415. We could imagine a Roman army facing first the French full plate knights and then the English army based on longbow archers. These are very interesting scenarios but for this video I'd like to start considering the late medieval armies of the Battle of Agincourt. If you like these speculative videos I could turn this into a series and the following video could be Roman Legion vs Crusader Army. Let me know in the comments below. Often, people bring up the sort of equipment these respective sides would be using in battle. Now, definitely, the sort of equipment, gear, armor, weapons that would be used is an important factor, but is not a deciding factor, particularly when considering the technological gap or difference between an Imperial Roman Legion and a medieval army of the late 15th century. So we have about 1400, 1300 years of difference. There is a technological gap it's rather significant, but it's not as significant as the gap that we would have between an army of the late 15th century against a modern army with tanks, rifles, etc. In the second case scenario, in the latter case, the medieval army will be completely wiped out. No questions asked. But with the Romans, the situation is completely different and I'd like to bring up quite a few factors. The medieval army could win and definitely has an advantage, but the Roman legion could also win, depending on a lot of factors that we will take into consideration in this video. I'd like to underline that available technology doesn't only mean the technology your engineers can create, but also the technology you can loot from your enemy. The Romans looted war machines all the time, whether it be from the Carthaginians or from the Greeks, 
from Syracuse, you name it. So it would only make sense that if the Legion could invade and control a medieval town full of medieval war equipment, they would loot it. And anything they would find better suitable to face their enemies, they would use, copy and adapt. History teaches us that the Roman Legion wasn't a static organization. The Romans knew how to make perfect use of logistics. They were highly trained, highly disciplined, had numbers and were very well equipped for their time. And by well equipped, we again need to understand that we mean that they had excellent gear specifically designed to face the weapons and tactics of their opponents. In a war against a medieval fiefdom, Rome would most likely change and adapt again. However, on this video we will consider a single battle, not a war. Another point in favour of Rome is the economic infrastructure it could base its legions upon. Rome was very successful because in the words of the Greek general and historian Polybius, Rome was a Goldilocks city, not too democratic, not too monarchical, with a well-ordered military system and a religion in which the right people were firmly in control. Both in the words of Greg Wolfs, professor of ancient history at the University of St Andrews, as he reviews the seminar of the English historian Edward Gibbon, the Romans had, so it seemed, achieved so much of what European states of the day still strived to create. There was peace, the rule of law, and some measure of religious toleration. He documented economic progress too, noting advances in navigation and agriculture and the growth of commerce. The Roman army of the first century was completely state-funded, and they were never underfunded during this time. Alasia, for example, Kaiser's numerous crossings into Germany, and their assault of the Jewish fortress of Masada are perfect examples of the speed, efficiency and engineering ability in open field and battle siege. So when trying to understand the technological gap between medieval armour and Roman armour and then medieval weapons and Roman weapons, so one thing we need to uh, keep in consideration that clearly late medieval armour is technologically superior to Roman armour, there's no doubt about it. But would the Roman armour be obsolete during that sort of battle? Well here's the thing, why first off, let's ask this question, why is medieval armour superior? Well there are a few reasons. Reason number one, medieval armour covers more parts of the body the kind of steel used particularly by the high-end medieval full-plate knight harnesses. Of course, not all knights had that sort of heat-treated steel, but those who did, well, that sort of armour would basically be almost invulnerable to Roman weapons. That does not make the knight completely unbeatable, however, and we'll get back to that in a moment. Also, the uh, medieval, late medieval armour was very well optimised against ranged weapons. Now, not that the Romans used a particular amount of, of ranged weapons, but they did use archers, like the Numidian archers. Now, those would be absolutely useless against full plate armour because we already know the longbow archers of the English could not uh, kill the uh, French knights in full plate armour. At least that is the most accredited uh, concept now. So how did the English beat the French? Well of course this is not a video on the Battle of Agincourt or Azincourt, I've already made a video on that, but definitely it was not the longbow that beat the full plate armour, there are a lot of reasons. Uh, for example the poor tactical choices of the French, the overconfidence of the French, the terrain, the mud, the weather, the way the English had a much better defensive position which completely nullified the charges of the heavy shock cavalry of the French. There are a lot of reasons, but definitely the sort of armour that the French knights were using, particularly mounted nobility, uh, was adequate protection against the uh, war bow used by the English. So clearly it goes without saying that no Roman pilum, uh, no Roman arrow could ever penetrate full plate armour, particularly the heat treated one. Not, not a chance, not only for the amount of carbonium, not only for the quality of steel, but also because of the overall shape. As I said, full plate armour was optimised against ranged weapons, it's because it was rather rounded. And look at the uh, hound scowl bassinet, um, it's very pointy, as you can see, and that deflects arrows much more easily than any a flat helmet would. Also, the breastplates were rounded again, that is to encourage weapons to be deflected, to glance off the body. You have so much optimization against ranged that I believe that Roman Pila, the standard tactics calling the Roman legionaries to throw the Pila against their uh, opponents before engaging in, in, in hand to hand, wouldn't work against the fully mounted full plate armored knights. 
Of course, it is the Roman legionaries who managed to throw a volley of Pila against crossbowmen or against archers, then yes, that could do a lot of damage. So that is probably one of the things I think the Romans should try and do if they were to fight the English longbowmen. So if the Romans managed to get to hand-to-hand -hand combat a distance, they should use their Pila against the longbow archers, absolutely. So we said that the medieval armies, both the French and the English, would have an edge, an advantage. But here's the thing, with, this with any hypothetical battle, we need to choose the leaders, because the commanders, the generals, will make the difference. These two specific medieval armies behaved in very interesting ways. So I think the English could beat the Romans, because the English showed that they knew how to manipulate their opponents, they would shower them with arrows, they would break their morales. This specific um, English army was very effective on the field, and they beat an opponent that was overconfident, and that is the key. If the French knights, because remember, the army of the French was, was not only uh, mounted knights, they also had ma uh, knights on foot, quite a few, and they also had the Genoese crossbowmen, and, and they had other archers. The problem is that if we were to replicate the same uh, scenario, the same sort of tactical behavior of the French against the Romans, I believe the Imperial Roman Legion can completely wipe out the late medieval army of full-plate French knights. How can that be? The reason is because they were overconfident against the English, weren't they? So of course they would be overconfident against the Romans, I believe. They literally thought that they could just charge in, destroy the English and come back home quickly before the evening came. So I believe that they would probably consider the Romans to be primitive. I don't believe all medieval kings would underestimate the Romans. Those who were literate, those who would study the words of the generals of Rome, they would probably admire them so they would not underestimate them. But the French in this case, the French nobility, they didn't even wait for their support units that were supposed to come. They're not in, they didn't even use the entirety of the Nights. Some were just wandering off, some were just feeding the horses. I mean, they made a lot of mistakes because of overconfidence, and I think that they would have the same overconfidence and the same behavior against the Romans. And the Roman army is a force to be reckoned with and cannot be underestimated, even from a late medieval army, in my humble opinion. So the moment the Romans managed to uh, nullify, for example, the charge of the, of the heavy knights, they would probably use the terrain at their advantage because they knew how to do it. Uh, I think that they could beat the knights. At the end of the day, a lot of the knights died on that battle because the moment they managed to reach the front line with the long bowmen, they were already exhausted, they couldn't breathe, it was hot, armor was full of mud, and you know, there were a lot of problems. When they got there, the long bowmen killed them off in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Now, given, some long bowmen were quite well armed and they had good armor, maybe not full plate armor, but they were quite well armed. They even have, we know that some longbowmen even had uh, full plate um, protection for the arms. They had full legs, for example. So you, it's not like the longbowmen were something that you could completely wipe out in hand-to-hand -hand combat. They knew how to fight. They weren't as effective as the knights, most likely, or were as trained as the knights or as protected as the knights, but exhausted knights with a completely broken morale were destroyed in hand-to-hand -hand combat by longbowmen, so of course they would be destroyed, I believe, by heavy infantry, professional Imperial Roman infantry, if they managed to, to basically mess up, and I think that they would, because if they did against the longbowmen, I think that they would against the Romans. The crossbow fire could deal a lot of damage to the Romans. But again, if Genoese crossbowmen were used properly, they weren't used properly during this battle again. Um, the, the, they didn't have the pavis shields, uh, the French didn't allow them to carry them with them, they, their equipment was wet because of rain, they threw an, a very ineffective volley of bolts and then the longbowmen retaliated and when the uh, Genoese crossbowmen started to retreat because they wanted to go and retrieve their shields to, to actually uh, deploy them and, and fight effectively, the French knights thought that they were cowards and they killed them. So, so this was so stupid that again I think the crossbowmen were not... You, they, the French even changed completely the tactics. They were supposed to go to have the crossbowmen in, in the front with the archers, then they didn't. They moved them to the sides. They, as I said, they did not have their pavis. So I think the Romans again can outsmart them. So this is the reason why the reason why I'm bringing this up is because because even if you have a better weapon, better technology, much better armor, it doesn't automatically mean you're going to win if you don't know how to use them if you don't use them properly. 
It's like taking an automatic rifle and giving it to someone who doesn't know how to shoot and then have him have a gunfight with a guy who is extremely trained and only has a handgun. Well, my money's on the guy with a handgun because he's properly trained and most likely the guy who doesn't even know how to shoot is going to miss him anyways. So, to reiterate, a fully trained, well deployed and well commanded late medieval army of full plate armoured knights could probably wipe out the Romans. But, if you have an ill commanded late medieval army, the Romans can still be a formidable enemy and they can still completely destroy the medieval army, in my opinion, but of course let me know what you think. Against the archers is a different, different situation because there we need to understand the effectiveness of the scuta and the testudo. Much will have to do with that and again much will have to do with the generals so what I'm trying to bring up with this video my answer to all of this speculative situation is it's not just a matter of equipment it is a matter of generals it is a matter of strategic deployment there are so many factors the weather the morale logistics the money behind there are so many factors that play an important role that is very difficult to just say the Romans would win, the medieval army would win. We could say that with a modern army. A modern army can completely wipe out a medieval army or a Roman army. Although again, are we talking about a battle or are we talking about war? Because if you're talking about a battle, yeah, the surprise factor, intimidation of the new uh, weapons and technology, they will probably destroy them completely, no questions asked. But in a long-term war, do, does the modern army have ammunition? Because if they run out of ammunition and they run out of petrol for the tanks, it's going to be a problem to deal with the guys, with Romans or medieval people who were used to hand-to-hand -hand combat much more than we are today. So again, is it war? Is it battle? Who is leading the armies? All of these factors play a very important role and need to be taken into consideration. Okay, noble ones, well, thank you very much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this video. If you did, please remember to thumbs up and subscribe to my channel for more content from the Metatron. If you like this sort of speculative history and you want me to make more videos like this, then please consider sharing this video because lately I haven't had many views, unfortunately, on my videos. So if you share uh, the sort of videos you like, then it's, it's more probable that I can continue uh, to invest time and effort uh, into the making of that sort of videos and perhaps in continuing a series. So let me know in the comments below, let me know if you like these sort of videos and as always thank you for your time and remember the Metatron has spread his wings. Goodbye.